Hello, lovely people of YouTube, and welcome back to Mark on Life and Ghibli Time! Thank you so much to everybody who watched last week's episode, which was the utterly bizarre but brilliant Pom Poco. If you haven't seen that episode, I will leave a link in the description and at the end of this video too. Now, I will actually be away when this video goes out. I will be on a gondola somewhere in Venice, but there was no way I was going to let a video not go out. So, even though I may be on a gondola now, today we are covering one of the Ghiblis that I didn't know so well, the fantastic Whisper of the Heart. Whisper of the Heart was first released on the 15th of July, 1995. And as with a lot of the other Ghiblis, it was the number one domestic film of that year, earning itself 1.85 billion yen. Japanese title of this one is interesting. It's Mimi o Sumaseba, which means, well, the title they call it is If You Listen Closely. It sort of means, if you sh technically it means if you strain your ear. Mimi is ear. And it's sort of, but that's, that's what it generally means, if you listen closely. So I'm not quite sure why. They, they changed that one. Whisper of the Heart is the name of the story that she writes, as we'll cover later. But uh, yeah, different title for some reason. There you go. Director is Yoshifumi Kondo and the writer is Miyazaki. Uh, and the source material is uh, a one volume manga from 1989 by Aoi Hiragi. Interestingly enough, um, this is the first official um, Ghibli feature film that wasn't directed by either Miyazaki or Takahata. Um, and would also be, there would be none directed by either of those two for seven more years until 2002, when it's uh, The Cat Returns came about, which also features one of the characters from Whisper of the Heart. Unfortunately, they sort of intended Kondor to be the sort of successor, natural successor to Miyazaki or Takahata, but that was not to be because unfortunately um, Kondor passed away uh, in 1998, and so this Whisper of the Heart was his only ever film. Whisper in the Heart also is the first Ghibli film that uses digital composition. So the use of a computer to put parts of animation together, certain sequences, not all of them, certain sequences where there's a lot of things coming together were done entirely digitally, which is the first time that had ever been used. As well as the fact it is the first Japanese film, not just anime, I'm pretty sure it's the first Japanese film that used Dolby digital sound. So quite a kind of interesting technological step up in this one. A uh, good English cast on this one, got an English dub in 2006, so 11 years later. We've got Brittany Snow in the lead playing Shizuku. We've got uh, Jean Smart, Ashley Tisdale, Kerry Elwes, uh, Courtney Thorne Smith, and a bunch of other people. So yeah, really good dub on this one. So what happens in Whisper of the Heart? It's based on a little town called Seiseki Sakuragaoka, can't believe I got that right, um, which is in the Tama Hills in uh, West Tokyo. So interestingly enough, if you remember Pompoko, that was Tama Hills, and they were building this new development called New Tama. So really, the apartment that they live in is sort of in the complex that was built as part of Pompoko, which is a nice little development. So our hero for this film is, as usual, a young girl, a 14-year-old girl called Shizuku. And she is in her last summer holiday of junior high school. And so, even though she got exams coming up, she doesn't really want to study much. She wants to read every book in the library. She wants to translate um, kind of Western songs into Japanese, a bunch of other stuff she wants to do. As part of her kind of crazy reading um, adventure, she notices something slightly odd. She notices that all the books that she's checked out from the school library, there's um, a man's name that has been on every single one before her. Every single one she's checked out has been checked out by this guy before her, which she finds really odd and doesn't know what it is. Her mum is going off to do education, get her MA, her sister's annoying her, and the usual stuff, you know, squabbles about boys at school and crushes and this kind of stuff. Normal, everyday teenage kind of things. But one day, while she's riding on a train, she has a slightly odd experience. She meets this cat that for some reason is on the train, which she thinks is quite weird. And so she decides to follow it. She loses it a few times and then comes back to it. And it leads her all the way to the other side of town to this very sort of bizarre antique shop. It's an eclectic antique shop run by a guy called Mr. Nishi. And um, so she goes in, has a look around, really likes this place. 
Um, but then she has to go because she has to go to cram school, which is Japanese kind of summer school for getting ready for your exams. So the new school year starts. The usual problems of, of again, boys and studying and all that kind of stuff. But she decides to keep going back to the antique shop because she really liked it. Unfortunately, it's closed most of the time. And so she's like, oh, I can't go in. But one time she goes there and she runs into this boy. She's run into this boy a few times before and he's been a bit rude to her. Like he's picked up her book and then given her a sort of weird comment or something. So he's not, she doesn't really like this boy, but he's there. And it turns out that he's the son of the antiques guy, Mr. Nishi. So he invites her in to have a look around the antique shop and he shows her downstairs to all his violins because he wants to be a violin maker and go to Italy and study. And she sort of stops hating him so much and, and they sort of get on uh, as friends. And while he's showing her his violins, it leads to one of the most lovely Ghibli scenes I've ever seen, which is this very simple music scene. He starts playing the violin, she starts singing, and then... Um, his father and his friends come home and they all have a little song to um, Country Road. It's a really, really nice little scene. Unfortunately, after this, she learns that he is, the, the boy is, the guy from the books. So this this up because he's got a different name. And she's really angry. Not for long, but it's a bit confusing to her. So Seiji, this guy, he likes her. He likes Shizuku. And he in fact tells her that actually... He only did certain things like taking the books out just to get her attention in some weird way. But he's going to Italy in the next few days, which is really unfortunate. You know, it's just really bad timing for them. And so Shizuku is a bit sad. She's always been a bit aimless and her parents haven't been hard on her for studying. So she's just read books and she just feels like she's not good enough for him or life or anything. And so she starts writing this story about a character called the Baron, who is her favourite statue in the antique shop. This, um, this cat statue, who is a character who features very heavily in The Cat Returns later on. And she gets obsessed with writing this story. Her grades are getting worse and worse and worse because she can't do anything else. She doesn't want to sleep, she doesn't want to eat, she doesn't want to study. She just wants to write this story obsessively, obsessively, obsessively. And then when she finishes, she takes it back to Mr. Nishi to read. Luckily, Mr. Nishi really likes it. But it's taken her on this bizarre sort of fantasy adventure in her mind for the last few months of sort of thinking of the Baron. And so Mr. Nishi explains the history of the truth of the Baron and why he, how he came to, to find it and, and the, the, um, what he's going to do to find this, the other one of the, this set. And this makes Shizuku feel better because she's validated that of all the things she may not be able to do, the things she has her dream for writing, she's quite good at. And then Seiji returns, comes back from Italy a day early and comes to see her. And I won't ruin the ending because, well, I'll leave it up to you. So would I recommend Whisper of the Heart? Absolutely. I really liked this one. Like I said, I didn't know this one particularly well compared to a lot of the others, but it was a pleasure to, to revisit it. Do I recommend buying it? Yeah. Great transfer. Good Blu-ray. Absolutely. It's a pickup. Go check it out right now. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a Big thumbs up if you like this video, it really does help. Leave me a comment, what did you think? Have you seen Whisper of the Heart? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Next week, we are covering possibly the most popular Ghibli in the whole lot. With the exception of uh, Spirited Away, and my name is Totoro, this is the epic that everybody knows, and that is Princess Mononoke. I'm on all the usual social media platforms, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. I am Mark Joseph Actor, so go and follow me there. Click over here somewhere if you want to see last week's episode, which was Pompoko. And click over here if you want to see more of my face in my movie-based comedy series, Real Perspectives. So if I haven't eaten all the pasta and pizza in the world in Venice, I will see you all back right here next week for Princess Mononoke. But from me, Mark on Life at Ghibli time. I will speak to you soon.